Hey guys, welcome to Mars or Bust. I'm Spaceman Dave, and today we're going to take a look at Starship and SpaceX quality control procedures. Don't go away. I'll be right back. Please hit like and subscribe. It lets myself and YouTube know you're enjoying these videos. One thing I want to say before we get going here is the procedures that I bring up today by no means are all of them. These are just a few of them. How will SpaceX maintain quality control in Starship from now and into the future? Well, I can't say this is what they're currently doing, but I will tell you it's what they should be doing and what they'll have to be doing in the future. First, when building something like this, like a Starship, you need to maintain your quality control, and that starts at the very beginning of the process. From the choosing of the materials, all the way down to the final product. I know right now they're using 301 stainless. I don't know if there's any plans to upgrade to a more exotic stainless or not. Once they determine the materials that they need, they put out what's called an RFQ, which is a request for quote. Along with the request for quote, They'll also request a product analysis that will include a metallurgical certificate. It will also request a quality control report. This is normally done by quality control inspectors. Most manufacturers do this in-house, but some customers require third-party inspection for verification. This is not only a smart idea, in most cases it's necessary. You want to make sure you're getting exactly what you pay for. This doesn't only include dimensional sizing, size of the sheets, the material thickness. It will also include metallurgical reports. Once dimensioning is verified, like sheet sizes, sheet thickness is done by ultrasonics. An ultrasonic thickness meter looks like this. Once this is verified, then the metallurgical comes into play. This is done with a PMI unit, or Positive Material Identification Unit. This is what one of those looks like. This is not only done at the manufacturer, but should be done on the incoming products as well to SpaceX. And then verified periodically during construction. And not only is this done on the sheets, this can also be done on the welds to make sure that the weld material is exactly what it's supposed to be. In most cases with something this critical, a piece of the material is also sent out to laboratory for verification. Now this is just for the metal they use. Every component that comes into SpaceX receiving must be inspected in some manner. I'm sure they're doing basic part number verification and a visual inspection, just to make sure there's nothing damaged. I don't know if this is the case with SpaceX, but a lot of the companies I worked for actually spec'd out who the materials were going to be purchased from because they've used them in the past. In the same respect, they told you who they couldn't be purchased from. For instance, in some government and nuclear applications, they don't allow Chinese products, as they've had problems with them in the past. That's a big surprise, huh? I wonder if Boeing buys from them. Anyway, and this goes for every nut, bolt, screw, welding wire, or welding rod. Some welding wire and welding rod, depending on the type, have to be maintained at a certain temperature and at a certain humidity level. In nuclear applications, that welding wire and rod is locked up and issued daily and then returned and checked back in. And this can include markers, yes, regular markers and paint markers, because the chemicals that are in the ink and paint can damage certain types of metal. Now, if SpaceX is doing this the way it should be done, each one of those components is locked up, or at least monitored to know that nothing has been switched out. Okay, now during the welding process, there are certain procedures that have to be maintained in order to ensure the quality of the weld. Now where the two welds meet, there's a weld bevel. 
This has to be maintained at a certain angle. This is verified with a weld bevel gauge. There are different types of gauges for this purpose. This particular one is called a bridge cam. Also, there's a gap that has to be maintained between the two pieces of metal to make sure there's full penetration between the two pieces. Now this can be done either by the welder or in some applications it's required that an inspector verify it. I would think in this situation every step of the procedure of manufacture should be signed off by an inspector. Now some people will say that that's just an added cost but you know what? That's why the first pressure tanks didn't hold pressure. Now I'm not beating up welders because those guys bust their ass but I'll tell you one thing I've seen some shoddy ones I've seen the guys do things called slugging a weld that's when you add foreign material to a weld personally I think it takes longer but in the long run it just makes the weld weak and in no way am I saying that that's what happened with the tank for SpaceX I'm just saying that it can happen and I've seen it happen in the past the material that SpaceX is using for these tanks is too thin to be doing that anyway. In the same respect, a weld can be bad for other reasons. It can have nothing to do with the welder. The welder can do everything exactly as he's supposed to, like a bad rod, moisture, wind, or even shielding gas. Now that brings me to my next part, the weld inspection. Weld inspection can be done in multiple ways. One of those ways is visual inspection. A good weld has a certain look to it. There are certain things about a weld you do not want to see. You're looking for things like excessive weld cap, weld overlap, undercut, and there are many others. I do see that they're doing x-ray inspection on the welds and I would assume that's 100% inspection. This can be done with an x-ray machine, but more commonly done with Iridium-192. It's done also with Cobalt-60. Both of these are nuclear materials. My guess is they're probably doing it with x-ray or Iridium-192, as Cobalt is used on thicker material. In the case of Starship, my guess is they're probably using x-ray as an x-ray image is much clearer. The weld defects they're looking for with x-ray will include lack of fusion, incomplete penetration, and porosity. And these are just a few. There are many others. The quality control process will include pretty much every step of the manufacture of Starship, including fueling, fuel pressure, the tubing and the piping used in manufacture, fittings, basically everything. So for all of this to work as intended, this procedure needs to be maintained from the very beginning of the process all the way to the end. And this includes through liftoff, because once they've left the pad, there's no more chance to get it right. Some of you are probably wondering how Spaceman Dave might know about some of these things. I know it's hard to believe, but I wasn't always Spaceman Dave. For 25 plus years, I was Inspection Engineer Dave. I've spent countless hours in nuclear plants, power plants, oil rigs, worked for the government and the DOE, the DOD, and yes, I've even inspected for NASA. Let me know if any of you out there have ever worked in the QAQC industry. This here is the mob. These are my patrons. They're some amazing people. You guys are what helps me keep this thing going week after week. I have no words to describe how happy I am you're part of the mob. Thank you so much, guys. And you too can join the mob for as little as $1 a month. Check it out in the description.
Hey, Elon. Yeah, man. I have to apologize. I was inviting you out for just coffee. Where's my manners? I'll buy you a donut, too. I know a busy guy like you has to keep up his strength. Sleeping at the office and all. And you can have your choice of either Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. You decide. Give me a call.